What is going on, peeps? I am the Urban Franchise Tony Montana, and I'm here to hit you guys up with my review for AEW Dynasty. Uh, I'm going to run through the card, then going to let you know what I thought about the show. Um, so we start off the show with a Continental Championship match where we have the Rainmaker Okada taking on the Bastard Pac. And really, fire matchup. I missed the pre-show. I usually watch the, the Zero Hour and the buy-ins easily. Missed them today. I was a little bit busy. But, whoa. Started the show off with a bang. These two went at it. Solid matchup from these two. Okada walking out with the victory. Um, at the end, crowd showing their appreciation to Pac, saying, you're our bastard. You're our bastard. Very, um, very awesome ending to a match. They don't always show that. I remember that being in other pay-per-views in the past when you get it on when you got the DVD. You saw that moment in the ring. From there, we went to a big trios tag team match where we had the House of Black taking on the rated R superstar Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe. And a pretty epic match. This was a pretty epic match. These guys really went at it. Some pretty good spots in this match. Um, well, the thing that stuck, stood out to me was not even in the match. I just remember a promo on Dynamite a few weeks ago where Edge was like, you could tell he was just going out of custody. He was trying to come up with a name. and Yeah, the name he came up with just wasn't that best. But the team did work well together. Some great spots in this match. Definitely one you guys should definitely go check out. The next match following that one was another House of Black member, the current TBS champion, Julia Hart, taking on Willow Nightingale. In this match, uh, Blue Sky and uh, Chris Stantler were banned from ringside. Stokely was on commentary though. Willow and uh, Julia put on a, quite a great match. They put on a really good match. Um, two ladies who I've actually seen live um, very talented ladies, uh, very awesome mats. At the end of it, we had our, uh, I did not see the pre-show, so I could be wrong because I know there is that, uh, unification of the trio's belts, but our first new champion of the night, Willow Nightingale, walking out with the victory. Then we had the CEO, oh, CEO the boss, Mercedes Monet coming out because, um, Double or nothing. She was challenging the winner. So we're getting a rematch of that New Japan Women's Strong title match between Mercedes and Willow. Is Mercedes going to make up for it and take it from Willow this time? Just like how Willow uh, got the victory in that match. We'll find out. Um, stay tuned. I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a review for that one as well. Then from there, we went to the international title match. Where we had... Two former friends, two former undisputed members um, back in NXT. You had Roderick Strong, the current international champion, taking on Kyle O'Reilly. And this is a pretty good match. This was an actually really good match, actually, between these two. Ultimately, uh, you know, you know what's going on with that team. Um, the Undisputed Kingdom. Or the game into play. Roderick Strong walks out of the, with the victory. Great match. But at the end, we got a surprise. The leader of the Undisputed Kingdom making his return. Adam Cole, baby. And uh, he got out of the wheelchair. Yep. He's recovered from surgery, peeps. He's getting ready to get back into the pick, uh, game. He walked down to the ring. Very interesting moment, though. As he was coming down, as he was walking in the ring, he kind of slowed down and gave some stink eye to Wardlow. I wonder if that's future foretelling. We'll, we'll see how this story goes. Wardlow seems to always be in this situation where he's like someone's hired muscle and they turn on him. Like, bro, you need to stop being hired muscle. You don't need a team. You're a friggin' beast. If you want a team, go get in a super team with like Brian Cage and Powerhouse Hobbs. The three of you, no one's going to stop the three of you. Um... From there, we went to a FTW rules match for the FTW championship, where we had Lionheart, Chris Jericho. Never thought I'd be saying that in a review, although I think I've already have taken on Hook for the FTV, 
FTW title. And for those of you who don't know, who weren't around in the ECW days, FTV stands for Fuck the World. Uh, Taz was a real badass back in the day. These two really went at it. And uh, Hook, like, showed what he's got. Now, I thought this was one of those passion of the torches matches where Hook was going to get it. But I think this is going to probably be a, a trio. Like, they're going to do a trilogy of matches or at least one more. Jericho kind of it was weird because he, he won. But it was just like he did not look like he had a hit Hook in the face with a baseball bat. FTW rules essentially means ECW rules in AEW, I'm guessing. Um... This is a hard match. This is one of the more excited matches of the night. Um, Jericho, your new FTW champion. And I think Jericho being the FTW champion makes him the first FTW champion that's won the WWE and AEW world titles. Fun fact. Uh, from there, we go to a match that many people were looking forward to. The Aerial Assassin, Will Ospreay, take it on the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. These two, this is the match that really started to get me overly hyped. This was like an amazing, an amazing match. Um, these two just really went at it. Some amazing spots. Um, this is another one that came off as, as a passing of the torch type of thing. And it really did seem like um, Tiger Driver 97... One, two, three, Will Ospreay with the victory. But here is the thing. Um, Tiger, he went for, he hit the Tiger driver, then he did the slash move. It seemed like Brian got hurt off the Tiger driver. Now, they said he dropped on his head. When they showed the replay, you couldn't really see that, but maybe he did. But he was like, he was messed up. He was seriously, seriously messed up. Um, I really hope, I'm sending all our love and prayers out to the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. He's he's one of the goats in the game. Um, he he really did seem hurt. Like, he was going, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, it seemed real. Uh, Osprey seemed concerned. Don Callis seemed concerned. And it was like, times where you, it, it's a work, and you can kind of, it's like, is this really good? No, like, Osprey legitimately looked, like, he looked like a concerned kid seeing someone he loved hurt. Um, so did Callis. Um, all the love and prayers. Everyone send your love and prayers out to Brian Danielson, one of the goats in the game. I'm very, it's always very sad when someone gets hurt. Then from there, we went to the finals of the AEW Tag Team Championship match, where we had the EVPs of AEW, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, formerly known as the Young Bucks, taking on FTR in a ladder match for the belts in the finals. And peeps, this is an epic match. This is a really, really epic match. Quite the interesting ending. Um, these guys really went at it. Um, Cash was like the VIP in this one. Um, he was just really going. He was going like Dax got busted open good at one point. Some crazy spots. Uh, this is one I definitely recommend you guys go back and watch. This is another really hype one. Uh, but from the ending, came from someone in a sting match running into the ring and interfering. And it was security. Security was quick to get on this guy. When the mask came off, it was a scapegoat. Jack Perry. Are we still calling him Jungle Boy or is he just a scapegoat Jack Perry now? Um, the books have made it clear that they liked his work. Um... He helped the Bucks. Nick, one Nicholas, one up. Got the belts. Your new AEW Tag Team Champions, the EVPs, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, with the assist to the scapegoat Jack Perry. I'm guessing he's joining their little team of Fukada. Um, then from there, we get to the main event of the evening. The match that I the this is the match I was most excited. About. This is the match I was hyped for. This is the build. This is the last few months made me excited for this match. Um, I ordered this because of this match. I paid for this show just because of this match. It was the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. We had Samoa Joe, just hit 110 days as champion, defending against Swerve Strickland. And guys, let's, let's be real. Swerve has been killing it, bro. He has been killing it. 
Like, even before he was on TV, there was this documentary he was in, and you're seeing him killing it. He did de a death match and that. Then he went to NXT. He, they didn't give him much, but he made it work. He made Hit Row work. And that would have been a fire crew if uh, if they were given the right chances. Then he came to AEW, him and uh, Keith Lee. Amazing tag team. I, like, the spot in my mind, it kicks out him doing a kick back flip off of Keith Lee's chest. Then the feud those two had. Then the Mongol embassies build and everything. Get a Nana little dance. Um, popularize. Then this whole run where it's essentially, yo, like, it's like the Killmonger and Joker. Like, it's been so bad. Killmonger entrance gear was sick, too. That was sick as fuck. And it was just like, yo, he's someone I wanted to see be champion. I wanted to see it happen in the Fed in WWE, but I'm glad to see it happen in AEW. Um, congratulations, Swerve. That representation does matter. And it really does. Not a lot of people realize that. Some people may get about, who cares if he's the first black child? It does matter. Like, the key thing for me, and one thing that I point out to a lot of people is, like, I've always loved professional wrestling. And the key thing about professional wrestling, since I was a kid, everyone was represented in wrestling. Um, you saw every race in wrestling. You saw every sexuality in wrestling. You saw every uh, gender in wrestling. You saw every lifestyle. You saw rich people like the Million Dollar Man. Then you saw a farmer like Hillbilly Jim. Then you saw poor farmers like the, the Godwins. You saw a garbage man. Like, whatever. You saw everyone in wrestling. Um, I remember when I was younger and Ron Simmons winning the WCW championship. It was just really amazing for me. It was just like seeing that being a wrestling fan. I was like, oh, okay. I have a chance too one day. And I'm sure a lot of uh, Brown wrestling fans felt that when uh, they saw Jinder Mahal win the championship. And Puerto Rican fans with Damian Priest win the championship. That representation matters because it shows everyone that if this is your love, this is your passion, you can be the best at it. And it's great to see that. Um, the storytelling as well. And Tony Khan has sit in back past pressures. They weren't just going to do it to do it. It had to be the right person, the right story. This has been a beautiful, awesome build. Uh, really awesome. I was doing the Nana dance at the end. Um, really excited to see Dynamite. I'm going to go watch The Pressure right now. My ratings for this is going to be a 4.5 out of 5 because this was an epic show. If you guys have not checked it, you can get it on pay-per-view or I believe on YouTube and a few other things like Fight. Uh, thank you guys for watching this so much. Be sure to follow me on everything TBX420 Club and Urban Franchise Entertainment. Starting off with the channel you're watching this video on. You know, uh, that thumbs up thing. Go click that. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bells. You know, go and give us a comment. Give us a tip. You can give us a tip if you like and buy some merch. We've got some merch down there too. Follow me on my Instagram, TBX420 Club, for one of my most frequent places. You see me post on there more than anywhere else. Snapchat, TBX420, for my more mature content. You gamer? So am I. TBX420 on PSN. Go go find me. I'm on PS5 and playing those VR games. TikTok. Yeah, I do that too. TBX420 Club. Go check us out on there. Um, am I anywhere else? No, that's it for now, people. And I will be wherever they want me to be. So stay tuned. But there is also Cameo. You want a personal message from me? Go hit up that Cameo. And Pete, we got channel memberships. So you guys can see exclusive stuff. Hit that down below. Join channel memberships. Show your boys some love. Help us get some awesome new stuff. You know, we need more lighting, more cameras and stuff. Stay good, peeps. And keep it. Oh, this job.